is Kim Constable and welcome to this week's episode of Strong and Sculpted. I am here as usual with Mr. Mark Getty and today we are going to be talking about training around injuries. Now one of the biggest questions that I get asked is from women who have some kind of injury, maybe a lower back pain, they've had a knee replacement, they have some vertebrae which have fused in their, in their back or in their neck and they want to know how they can still get into the gym lift heavy weights and sculpt strong bodies. So I thought that I would come to the expert in not only all things body sculpting, but also all things injury, Thanks because <laughs> this man has injured himself a few times, I can tell you. So Definitely. Mark, thank you so much for being here yeah, today. My pleasure, Kim. Um, Mark, talk us through um, injuries. When? So what, what I would love to specifically know is, what yeah. is your experience with injuries? Because I know you've had quite a few. Yeah. And how did you, A, rehabilitate yourself from those injuries and when should someone train through the pain and just get stronger and when should they back off? Well firstly I uh, tore my tricep completely off the bone, the tendons of my tricep off the bone last September. So actually a year to this date I was on prep uh, for the NABA Universe five weeks out and I was doing inclined dumbbell presses with uh, 60 kilo dumbbells <laughs> and basically uh, not to go into too much detail but the dumbbell ended up on the face. 60 kilos in each hand? 60 kilos in each hand yes. And, uh, had them up and was about to start under rep one and my tricep snapped off the bone and the dumbbell ended up landing on my forehead. So not a nice injury, long story short, went to got an ultrasound and it appeared that I had full tricep avulsion, which means that every tendon on the tricep was torn completely off the elbow. So this basically it knocked me wow. out of the universe, obviously. Five weeks out, I couldn't train for it. Had to get surgery, got a tricep attached, reattached and started training. Now obviously my way of training, as you know, Kim, is heavy, hard to failure and as a result there's certain exercises now you have to avoid. Um, but looking back it's been a blessing in disguise because I've had to revamp my training, mm -hmm. revamp especially my push day, chest, shoulders, triceps and try to get more of an engagement into the muscle through main muscle connection and then rebuilding it back up there. Um, so 12 months later here I am back up to the way I normally am competing and uh, getting ready like I say for the next universe. So obviously training around injuries totally is there yes. and I'm actually doing it as a professional I'm going for one of the most prestigious shows in the world so if I can do it anybody can but do it. But how do you know how like after you've had an injury like that you know ripping the tricep off the yes. bone it's not a you know no, it's, it's not a nice thing to do I can imagine um, but how do you know like what well, you know, is there, is there some kind of guideline? Do you just listen to your body? How do you know how hard to train, when to push through, when not to push through, when to back off? Like, it, how did you structure your training after yeah, I that? Think, I think the first few weeks I knew that it was off. Once I got the surgery and the cast off, um, I kind of waited for about a couple of months and I literally went back into the gym. It was actually before Christmas and I was told not to train again in April. But I went back into the gym just before Christmas and I thought I'm going to start pushing carriages, no weight, just the machine and try to get a wee bit of stimulation in the muscle. I've um, done a lot of research and reading into like uh, electrode stimulation and things like that there and try mm -hmm. to stimulate the nerve endings to come back and obviously trying to push blood in through the muscle. And although tendons are very, you know, they don't hold much blood, they don't have much blood flow, I thought if I loaded the blood in the area that possibly some of the nutrients and things might It's something I always teach yeah. about, get the blood flowing around Big the muscle, time. around the injury and that will heal it. So for the first two or three months I literally was left in no weight. It was just uh, stretching the, the, the tricep out, full extension in different areas and using different machines just to mimic that. No 60 kilogram no dumbbells. No 60 kilo dumbbells. <laughs> and still no 60 kilo dumbbells, you know. Yeah. But basically just went in and uh, listened to my body. So if the tricep and the elbow got sore where it didn't, I stopped. If I was able to push more. And what I found was every week I was in, I was able to do that wee bit more, that wee bit more, that wee bit more. And by the time April came along, I had my arm completely rehabilitated. Wow. You know what I mean? Myself, I uh, went to the physio once every month. Um, just to kind of keep the stimulation and break down the scar tissue but for me I just kept pushing it and just up a wee bit if I felt any pain that wasn't the pain that I wanted to feel I backed off a wee bit so it was just patience and a bit of consistency the same recipe I would give people that aren't injured yeah just so that, that was my next and being consistent well, that's you know my next I mean? question so uh, given what you have experienced with your training so say a woman um, say a woman in one of my programs comes into the gym and she has pain when squatting because yeah. pain when squatting is a massive one that I that I hear and it's yeah. not always that someone has injured maybe they have weak knees or they have an injury in their lower back but they have pain when squatting yeah. so what you know and, and a lot of women will say to me I just can't squat I, I can't squat because it's too painful so, uh, so just to give my take on it sometimes I say well there may just be a little bit of fear yeah. there so you maybe just need to push past the fear and you know maybe just build up strength as you go but what would be your take on it if someone well, came in and said well, they the can't squat thing, because of the pain? The first thing you have to do is you have to distinguish the type of pain and I'm sorry but a lot of people 
uh, take pain as the wrong type of pain. People mm -hmm. think in squatting when they go down, they give it a wee tiny jolt and they find a wee bit of pain somewhere. But nine times out of ten, this could be pain due to incorrect warming up. It could be pain due to tight muscles. Mm -hmm. It could be pain due to different things being out of line. Pains that will come back in if you take a wee bit of care of your body, get regular sports massages, do a bit of stretching, etc., etc. So with that in mind, nine times out of ten, I found that most people can squat. Yeah. Do you, do you think that I mean? people are scared of pain? Of it's something are. that I have found a lot. People, it's, and again, they're, they're this is going to sound. I'm not trying to be on PC. But a lot of women especially in yeah. certain things like deadlifting and squats are afraid of the damage that might occur and my opinion on that is you need to put that out of your head because if you keep thinking that I might do this, I might do this, I might do this, you're not actually thinking about the movement mm -hmm. and you're actually think thinking about what might go wrong and a lot of times it will go wrong. Mm -hmm. Rather than thinking right it's a squat, use the bar, use it safely, use a light weight for starting with and then build it up. Another thing you have to remember is the best way to actually counteract pain and squatting is actually to get strong right. in the certain muscles. If you get your connective tissue and your muscles and things stronger around the lower back or around the legs, this will cushion mm -hmm. any sort of exercise you do when you're doing it. So in actual fact, getting stronger in certain exercises will actually stop the pain, will actually diminish the That pain. is actually so interesting because you brought me back now to whenever I first started in the gym and I remember um, I, you know, putting a 20, just the bar, at 20 kilos yeah. on my back and squatting. And then if I put anything more than 40 kilos in the bar, for days afterwards, I was crippled with back pain. Yeah. And what I actually realized um, through, again, researching, like you said, yeah. was that it wasn't that my that I had a bad back and I couldn't squat, it's that I had no glutes. Yeah. I was very quad dominant. So whenever I was, um, and I only just from doing yoga, not because I was training in the gym. So every time I squatted, I had pain in my lower back because yeah. my, my quads and my lower back were picking up all the slack. My glutes weren't Might firing, do weren't doing the work, and I didn't know how to fire and turn them on. So therefore, my lower back was picking up the uh, the effort yeah. as I was coming up and that was causing pain. So what changed that for me was learning how to fire up my glutes to get, I wasn't squatting low enough. So yeah. squatting low yeah. enough, firing up the glutes and then using the glutes and the quads to drive up exactly. the back pain If you, if you think about a squat at the me. bottom of the movement, it's the glutes and the hamstrings that are coming into play. So mm -hmm. if you're only doing a half squat or a three quarter rep squat, you're going to build up your quads, you're going to build up your lower back. And what happens when you tend to go deeper and try to push the weight? You don't have the muscle in the right areas to do this. You've created imbalances all over the body. These imbalances are going to lead to injuries. Mm -hmm. They're going to pull the knees potentially out. A lot of knee pain isn't actually inflammation, isn't actually sore knees. A lot of knee pain originates because your IT bands and your quads are too mm -hmm. tight, your hamstrings are too tight, your lower back's too tight, or your glutes are too tight, or believe it or not, your feet. Sometimes it can be due with flat feeted or calves being too tight, in mm -hmm. which case sometimes if you're getting pains in the knees, like me, your dorsiflexion in the ankle might not be great enough, in which case putting a small plate under the heel to elevate when squatting will take this away. So your first tip is you need to figure out what kind you of pain is it and what where sort of pain is the pain it is, where it is from. and then get it sorted. And if then you, work around yeah, it. Tight IT bands are simple, stretch, foam roll, go to a chiropractor or go to a sports massage and get that rubbed out. From my prep last year before I tore my tricep, my knees were tight and it was just basically because of the amount of effort I was exerting in leg day that mm -hmm. basically I needed the IT bands consistently rubbed out and my glutes rubbed out but every time I get this done it got easier and easier week in week out and I was able to go back up to heavyweight squatting with no issues in my lower back, no issues in my knees, no issues at all and uh, I had pains in my knees and the pains in my knees were from you know, dorsiflexion in the ankles and tight IT bands. Nothing wrong with knees whatsoever. Yeah. I find I that a lot, a lot of people give up too quickly as well. They, they find a little bit of pain. They say, oh, I can't squat, I can't pain. do it anymore. They think they can't do it, and as a result, they leave it out as a, I can't squat. When in actual fact, I would say, nine times out of ten you can't squat mm -hmm. well let's say someone's scared of squatting because i know a lot of women you know they're scared especially if they're by, the, they're by themselves what are some of your top tips for you know how to a squat safely with a free bar and yeah. what to do if you really are just in the beginning so scared you can't do it what would be what would you advise well obviously to do? the first thing make sure your legs are well warmed up do you mm -hmm. know what i mean second thing you have to think about what how, you're doing sorry i need to go back how how do you make sure your legs are well warmed up you can do a few sets of leg extensions to warm up the knees you could do a few sets of leg curls to warm up the uh, the back of the legs you could do maybe even a few sets of glute bridges to warm up the glutes right maybe a little bit of stretching if your knees are really bad a bit of foam rolling and then go into squats you okay. know firstly start off with the bar make sure your stance are right make sure that everything is ready to go take a good deep breath in and just literally 
go right down to the. What end. about the arms? Do you believe in putting on uh, the you, safety arms? You can do, yeah. You could you could put the safety arms at a, at a bit. The problem I have with the safety arms is most people tend to put them up too high. Right. Do you know what I mean? I'm a big believer that if you if you go to do it, the best way to get over the fear of something is actually to do it. Yeah. And nine times out of ten, once you do it once, you love it. I know people that have never squatted start squatting their first set and squat every week now because yeah. it's that sort of. They get over that fear and they're into that now of trying to better themselves or trying to beat their weights. And it's one of them exercises that I believe, if done correctly, that you get maximum results out of, you know. Mm -hmm. But to be fair, I think 90% of what people are in the squat is it's in their head. Yeah, it's fair. I really do. What about squatting in the Smith? Because I know whenever you and I train together, yeah. you know, we do a lot of Smith squats. And I know there's a lot of evangelicists, mm -hmm. evangelicists out there, evangelic if that even a word, um, that say, you know, you should never squat in the Smith, you should always be squatting, free squatting, because you're using more muscles and all the rest of it. What are your thoughts on that? Well, firstly, for the intermediate or the, the, the beginner lifter, I think Smith squatting has a big place. Mm -hmm. Like you said about the fear, the thing about the Smith machine, as you know, it's hooks. Mm -hmm. So in any step of the movement, it's easy to get back up because you can just hook the bar in and crawl out from under it. So it's the safety factor. So for a beginner lifter, the, 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 the Smith machine squat is a fantastic way to learn how to go up and down. Also, it just puts the, puts the emphasis on the legs. You just put the back, line everything up, make sure the glutes are pushed out and your chest is high, and the only thing you have to concern yourself about is on the legs. So you'll get more uh, more positive feeling on the legs, more stimulation on the legs than you will do in a free bar squat where you're worrying about everything else going wrong. Mm -hmm. For the advanced lifter, I also find the Smith machine is a great way to overload the legs. In mm -hmm. other words, pile the weight up as much as you can, knowing that there's a the safety factor there and literally driving and trying to recruit as many muscle fibres as you actually can. Oh, wonderful. And I suppose you can play around with the position of the feet you as can. well you in the squat. You can put the feet away so. in front of you, you can put the feet out wide, you can put it in close, you can put it in, in front of you, you can do it anything, whereas in the free bar, if you do any of that, you'll fall on your face. Okay, so just to sum up, so for people who are injured or who find it hard to squat, so first of all, they need to squat more, to yeah. squat more, squat Address more. Address the problem. Address the problem, figure Address out where the, the problem, problem's coming out from. Figure out where the pain is actually coming from. And nine times out of ten, you haven't got bad knees and your hips aren't screwed. Nine times out of ten, the pain's coming from somewhere else that can be sorted. Okay. Do you know so, what I mean? So, and then point two, you can find another exercise such as squat There's on the Smith. There's tons of exercises. Squat on, like say, say somebody just can't squat, should they just yeah. find another yeah. exercise that stimulates the same muscles? Yeah, or? they can do. I would advise people just to stick at it as much as possible okay. until they really, well, really, Well, that's what really I always advise you. I always say consistency, you know, consistency, consistency I believe that once time. you get it done, and you'll be grand. I don't think I've seen anybody else that can't squat on some piece of apparatus. Do you right, know okay. what I mean? And I've been about this game 20 years. <laughs> and I don't think, I'm trying to think offhand, and all my clients to some degree over the past years have squatted. Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Whether it's a free bar, a smith or a hack, everybody squats. And what about asking for help? Just a final point before we finish. So should you ask for, for some, to someone to give you a spot big in the time. gym? Yeah, or? the gym's there for people like-minded people to train. And I'm a big, massive believer. I try to create an environment in here where everybody can come to anybody, including me, and ask them for a spot. Yeah, a lot yeah, of women are very I mean? scared too because they're, well, they're intimidated going into the gym anyway. And so they feel that when they're there, you know, they don't want to ask somebody to help them. But the I, people that are there are probably the nicest people. Bodybuilders. Yeah within reason are probably the nicest people it's you're a going tribe. to ask, do you know yeah. what I mean? And they will, they'll give you a hand, especially if they see somebody trying to better themselves. Everybody likes trying to help somebody out, do you yeah, know what I mean? True. Everybody likes people succeeding within reason, do you know what I mean? So why not ask the person that looks to know what they're talking about? Can you correct my form? Can you look at what I'm doing? Can you keep an eye on me? If that's the best way to you to feel safely in what you're doing, then why not? And sorry, one more thing actually before we finish, it just came to mind when you said about form there. So, um, I, you know, I, I get a lot of women asking me, well, they say I can't glute bridge because it hurts my back. Yeah. So, but I always say to them, well, a glute bridge should never be in your back. It should be in your glutes. It's a thrust. It's yeah. not a, a tilt. It's a thrust. So, like if someone says they can't glute bridge again for me, I think sometimes it's just fear uh, holding them back from really trying. Yeah. But if someone says, you know, glute bridge has hurt my back, what else can I do? What would be your advice? Glute bridge. Just you know glute I mean? bridge. Well, you know, within <laughs> yeah. reason. Again, yes. again, distinguish the problem. If there is an issue in the lower back and it is bad, then there's other exercises. There's reverse hyperextensions, glute ham raises. Um, I think we done them the other mm -hmm. day. Do you know what I mean? Great exercise for the glutes, great exercise for the hamstrings. Um, leg press high in the leg, or feet high in the leg press, a great exercise for the hamstrings and glutes. But in reality, try, you know, I'm not trying to patronize you, but try doing the thing right. You, yeah. you know, there's a lot of bad form techniques that go on the glute bridge. To me, when I glute bridge, I only feel it in my glutes. Yeah, me too. So for me personally, if you're feeling it in your lower back, it means you're doing something wrong. Incorrect. How to, how to do that, right? Take a video of what you're doing. Yeah. Take a video, get somebody to take a video of the way you're glute bridging when you feel it in your leg or feel it in your back and ask somebody to correct it. Yeah, well, form. that's actually a very good point. Like if you're not, if you're not feeling it where you should be feeling yeah. So first of all, I would say as well, one of my top tips would be figure out where you're supposed to be feeling the exercise. A glute bridges, you're supposed, they're called glute bridges for a reason yeah. because you're supposed to be feeling them in your glutes. Yeah. So if you're not feeling them in your glutes, your form could be off. So okay. get someone to check your form, make sure you're doing it right. And also then figure out whether it's in your head 
or it really is it, in your body because quite often it can just be in the it head. It could be bad form or it could be you actually don't know to put your mind on the muscle. A lot of times, like you say, the fear factor, if you're mm -hmm. going to do a glute bridge with the fear of your lower back, you're consistently thinking of your lower back. Yeah. So therefore, you're not actually thinking about the muscle you're working. Mm -hmm. You're tearing through a set of 12 reps and you haven't thought once about your glutes. Mm -hmm. The same can be said of squats. If you're tearing through a set of squats worrying about your lower back, you might not even think about your legs. Right. By the time you've racked it, you haven't felt it. You know, mind muscle connection and feeling that the muscle being worked is a massive part of physique or bodybuilding. Wonderful. Okay, well, Mark, you've been so helpful. Thank Brilliant. you so Thank much. You very much. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it's given you a little bit of confidence now to go into the gym and to really figure out your form and if your pain or if your uh, fear of squatting or glute bridging or whatever is in your head or whether it actually is in your body. So now I wanna hear from you guys in the comments below. Do you have an injury that you are working through? Do you find squatting hard or do you love squatting and could squat all day? Have you ever tried a glute bridge or has your fear of hurting yourself held you back from really pushing yourself hard in the gym. Whatever your experience, we wanna hear from you in the comments below. Let's start a conversation there, and I will see you next week on Strong and Sculpted.